This is my father, Daniel, and it's a pretty personal pain story to me because it's the pain story of his treatment for leukemia. So, Dad, do you want to kind of tell us your story? Six and a half years ago, July 25th, 2006, I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. I had been feeling weak. I had various spots over my body. Um, and I went in and they did a blown, bone marrow um, biopsy and discovered that I did have leukemia. Um, acute myeloid leukemia is a cancer of the bone marrow, um, which um, affects the production of white blood cells so that only abnormal cells are produced. You eventually lose your immune system. Um, you, the, these um, cancerous white blood cells crowd out the um, red blood cells so that you become anemic and the platelets so that you can't um, coagulate your blood. So I went immediately into the hospital for the first of a series of four um, treatments of chemotherapy uh, over a six-month period. Um, after a while, I lost a lot of weight. I became nauseous. Um, I developed skin rashes and uh, I had scales all over my body. Um, big orange, blue, black spots over my legs of uh, mold areas that were growing and um, I, my skin became so sensitive that I, um, I felt pain just simply having the sheet touch me or a breeze blow on me. Um, I couldn't roll over um, without experiencing a lot of pain. Um, they started giving me pain medication. Um, I felt that it was never enough. I kept asking for more. They kept giving me more. Um, eventually, I, um, as my immune system went down to almost zero, um, I got an infection of a tooth, which they pumped me up with platelets so that they could, um, so that my blood would coagulate, and they yanked it out. And for some reason, I was in so much intense pain from this one tooth extraction that it lasted for the rest of the time that I was in the hospital. It was absolutely excruciating pain. And they gave me more and more um, nar narcotics until finally they gave me a, an IV drip that I could administer the morphine with um, on my own. Um, I became addicted. I started in the hospital having hallucinations. I often didn't know I often didn't know if I was awake or asleep. I had nightmares when I was asleep. I had these hallucinations when I was awake, but the pain did subside. Eventually I had a bone marrow transplant and um, after the last month of chemotherapy and recovering from that transplant, um, they let me go home. I'd lost 45 pounds. Um, and was I couldn't eat. Um, my taste buds were shot, so that everything tasted um, putrid. Um, and they, the day before I went home, I was on full uh, <laughs> morphine mode, uh, and then they took it away from me. And um, they sent me home. Uh, nobody talked with me about the fact that. I was addicted to morphine, which I didn't know. I was, I didn't know anything. I was in a state of not even knowing what was real and what wasn't real. 
so I went home and um, suffered uh, very extreme withdrawal symptoms. Um, hallucinations became worse. Uh, I was afraid to go upstairs. I, I went to a doctor who gave me more, um, I think it was oxycodone, so that I could, um, so that I could go off more slowly. But when I, When I started taking taking it again, the hallucinations got worse. I looked outside my window and saw bodies burned, hanging from trees. I saw a woman all dressed in white who was being crucified. And other things. And my nightmares at night got worse. And eventually I just, I stopped taking it because I was just too, too, it was too much. And the withdrawal symptoms got worse, and uh, I was, you know, I was really a mess. It took uh, many months to come out the other side of it, and actually more than that, to stop having, you know, flashbacks and traces of those dreams. So, I, the thing I regret the most is not actually being given the narcotics because I I was in so much pain I begged for them I begged and begged and begged I needed something but the fact that nobody told me what I was getting in for nobody told me how to get off of this. Nobody warned me about what my experience might be. I had no idea what was happening to me. That really, uh, that really does upset me. No one told any of us. No. You know, there were, like, I was here, mom was here, Melanie was here, and, and None of us knew what was no. happening to you. It, it was so, it so easily could have been a result of the cancer that you were so, yeah, in so much pain and having so much yeah. trouble with your mind. And no, no one warned yeah. us about the addiction or the, yeah, the cold turkeying off of it. Yeah, and I was just so incredibly happy to be released from that isolation unit that I was on in the leukemia ward and to be home and I thought that life was you know going to start for me again and it just was a horrific 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 experience it caught me completely by surprise that's the most horrifying part about it all is you know you survived cancer and you were in this hospital and you were having just the worst time of your life and then it was just met with another nightmare yeah that was possibly even worse than being in the hospital yeah because it ruined it's hard your... to choose between the two but uh <laughs> yeah but it did it really ruined yeah your house for you yeah for a long time yeah it's true everything scared me yeah was it worth it? Would you do it again the same way? 
was it worth it to have that drip of that constant drip of all I know is that I could not I can't imagine being in that much pain for I mean even when I was on the morphine I was still in pain uh it was not you know it was it was manageable but uh I can't I cannot conceive of being in that much pain for that amount of time I needed something how much uh, were you giving yourself do you think well apparently there was some shut off valve uh or some <laughs> you know limit um but I I um I you know, I have no idea. It was one of three bags of things that were hooked up to different IV machines that were that I was attached to. And uh, I don't know, maybe every couple of hours I'd give myself another couple of squirts of it, um, you know, all day long. I remember your being there and thinking that we were in Vienna. <laughs> at a cafe table and uh, it was wonderful it was wonderful to be there <laughs> with you uh, I remember one time when you were there that I I don't know if I was asleep or not but I felt like I was paralyzed and I I couldn't move and it it for some reason it terrified me tried as hard as I could to move and I couldn't and I couldn't speak and I guess I will I think I was asleep I think I was dreaming it but I'm not sure but yeah it was it was hard to tell the difference between the real and 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 the unreal and it actually was for a long time I I I I never knew what a hallucination was I never knew how how real it is how it's not one of those things where you say you know I'm dreaming that woman being nailed to a cross was happening right there I was absolutely positive of it it's amazing I I I you know it, for me it was maybe three months and I cannot imagine people that you know suffer this kind of thing just you know drug addicts um, PTSD people that suffer these flashbacks and hallucinations all the time I can't imagine it what was it that finally do you think stopped the hallucinations or how long was it well I went to a therapist finally when I realized that there was something you know I was depressed I was experiencing psychiatric symptoms I was I had to start teaching you know uh, five weeks out after I got out and I was seeing things um, and I you know I, I needed help I finally went to see a therapist who um, helped me a lot just kind of realizing what I was going through and you know assuring me that it would go that it would go away at that point the worst part of the withdrawal symptoms were were over I was starting to be able to eat uh, a little and um, the hallucinations uh, gradually faded out they got less real and uh, less frequent and became more like flashbacks um, the nightmares didn't go away for well I still had these vivid nightmares three years later uh, but not you know they weren't regular um, anymore so I, I guess my body just readjusted um, yeah the doctors didn't warn you about hyperalgesia which is uh, the, the side effect of a, a narcotic pain medication that ba basically makes 
the pain worse and more widespread? Um, and do you think that that's something that you were experiencing when you say like a sheet hurt? I, I think it is, but they didn't even explain it to me when I was having it. I didn't know if it was normal or not. And it was, it was exacerbated by the fact that my skin was, was, uh, from, as a result of the chemotherapy and the, the, the destruction of my immune system was turning, you know, pa paper thin, scaly, these, these mold spots, uh, horrible itching, but even to, to, you know, barely scratch something was excruciating. So the fact that the surface of my body was just decaying away uh, made this, you know, twice as bad. It wasn't like a normal body that was being, you know, assaulted by sheets and, uh, you know, the nurse's hands and, and the, my port didn't work for, for drawing blood. So they had to draw blood twice a day for six months. My arms were just, you know, like an addict's arm from these, these, uh, uh, you know, from the draw blood drawings, people would come in at three o'clock in the morning and just, I was a body to them. They would, you know, take my body and, and strap the cord on. It was incredibly painful. Uh, and I, you know, I had no, I didn't even know what the source of the pain was. I didn't, I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't explain it. Uh, and again, I didn't even know, you know, half the time whether I was dreaming it or, or if it was real. I, you know, they, this was a top notch hospital for the treatment of leukemia, but they, we were not human beings there at all. We were bodies to be treated and they didn't explain things to us. They didn't, you know, comfort us. They didn't come when you scream for pain. How do you think they could handle it better? I don't know. I don't know what the alternatives are. I know that they could talk to patients. I didn't know what alternatives were. I said, give me something. And they are a place where, a warehouse of every kind of drug you can imagine. The bill for the treatment of my leukemia for six months was a million dollars. And the amount of that that was for medications was astronomical. You know, I, I, I took, I, I don't know how many pills I took a day in addition to the IV drip. Um, I, you know, I took pills for everything, for my sores, for my, um, you know, for my itching, uh, for the, the skin uh, uh, condition, for the mouth sores, for the, you know, um, for the diarrhea, for... Uh, for everything. I had no idea what I was taking. Um, uh, what was your question? <laughs> um, oh, what, how could yeah. they have dealt with it better? At that time, Lily, to me, was such a nightmare. And I think back on it, and I can't think of it in rational terms. I can't think of how, what could be done to treat a horrific disease like this in a better way. I, I, I leave it to others. I, I have no, I have no sense, I, I, I don't know. They could have explained things for sure. That would have helped a lot. Yeah, um, I think that's just one talking. One of the biggest things that yeah. you've complained about is that you just yeah. had no idea. No, and none of us did, you know, like the yeah. people who are close to you are all really educated people and yeah. we're all very practical, intelligent people who had yeah. no sense of communication yeah. about it and no idea what was going no. on with you. And we just wanted you better. Yeah. And you trust that doctors are going to make you better. That's their job. Yeah. But is it worth this secondary... I'd be dead if it wasn't for those doctors. I would have died within about two weeks of my diagnosis. And uh, so I can't, 
Um, <laughs> so I'm eternally grateful to them. Both your I'm also, angel and your devil. I'm also, you know, uh, horribly angry. Uh, when I think about it, I don't spend much time feeling anger, but uh, yeah, they were, they were, they saved my life and they contributed to an unbelievably horrific uh, experience, you know, above and beyond the devastation of the disease itself, the treatment of it.